If you and it's Emily Fox, today's video is going to be all about books that I DNF so did not finish during the last three months. This is one of my biggest challenges for the year. I feel like I'm always making challenges of like reading a bunch of books from different categories, but one of the things that I've struggled with my whole life is to learn to not finish books when I'm not enjoying them. And that's one thing that booktube really helped me with because at this point, since I started booktube, I've read about 100 500 books, so about 100 every year. And I have realized some patterns, like I can see that when I'm not enjoying a book and I'm forcing myself to finish, because I've always done that, torturing myself, rarely, if ever, do I change my mind and end up liking it. So why am I wasting my time? There are so many books on my TBR, so many books I want to read in my lifetime, even on my shelves, that I might even, never even get a chance to finish. So I need to just learn to put them down and move on with my life. So I have done pretty well so far this year. I feel like my first uh, quarter of the year was pretty decent. I've struggled a little bit more, I feel like, in the last three months to finally put down. Some of the ones that I did finish, I really should have put them down. But uh, I still have a couple of books that I wanted to talk about. I'm proud of myself. So let me go through the books that I am putting down, some of them forever. There's one of them I am definitely going to continue eventually, just I wanted to talk about the issues that I have up right now. So we can talk about it just because why not? Because I don't know when I'm going to continue. If I do, I think I will. So in April, actually, I did not DNF one book, which I probably should have, but overall I had a pretty decent reading month, so it wasn't too bad. In May, though, I DNF three three of them. So the first one was The Radleys by Matt Haig. I attempted to do a reading vlog where I was reading more from authors that I've loved before and I had a couple of his books on read on my shelf and I had been excited to read more by him because I really loved uh, The Humans and The Minute Library that just came out last year. So I wanted to explore and read more of the books that I had by him. And The Radleys was one of the ones I had found in library sale a while ago and I knew nothing about it. And I hadn't realized that I think it's why at least it read like a YA book. Uh, you're following this family who you kind of discover are vampires. And I didn't have to add like a hundred and something pages. So like there, there won't be any spoilers in here. Um, but yeah, it's kind of implied and like you quickly discover that they are. And the whole miscommunication throat, not really my thing. And I just found myself not wanting to read it, which if anything's gonna put you in a reading slump, what's the point, right? So I did end up putting that book down, plus I got access to a different book I was looking forward to reading. It was a Project Hail Marie by Andy Weir. So I decided, you know what, if you're going to start reading another book and putting this one down, it's a sign to just move on. So I did that, I'm very happy. Actually, it was part of my unhaul video that I do yearly. So I'm not gonna see it ever again and I'm okay with it. Just because I've enjoyed some books by an author doesn't mean I'm gonna enjoy his like, earlier work, which I've accepted, which little asterisk, I feel like I could have, should have DNF How to Stop Time by him, which was part of the same vlog. So I think that's that wasn't a great vlog for me. It did not end up working out, even though I will do more in the future of like trying from authors that I've loved because I'm sure sometimes it will work out, but for him, it didn't work. But yes, um, DNF one, should have DNF both, but you know. One that I DNF'd super quickly. I'm proud of myself for that one. Uh, I was trying to read a bunch of mystery thrillers. I still am, I'm in the mood. And I picked up The Fourth Monkey because I had seen it going around. I think a lot of people have read that one. And I put it down really quickly. I was listening to it as an audiobook. I think I was not even like an hour into it. and. I don't know, the cop talking, like I think it's a murder mystery and the cop talk, it wasn't working for me. I was getting bad vibes. Like this is like the worst argument ever, but this is a sign that I'm finally listening to myself and I just, there was some, just something that wasn't working. This one, you might convince me that it gets better because the series popular and maybe I just, you know, wasn't feeling it in the beginning. Maybe I should try it as an ebook, but I decided to put it down quickly, no regrets here. The next one is the one I tried. I was so stubborn and tried to like push through, which is a sign, once again, I need to work on this more. Uh, it is the guest list. I tried so hard because it is part of my Goodreads reading challenge for this year. Last year, I believe it's the winner uh, in the mystery thriller section for the Goodreads Choice Award. It won, so it means a lot of people enjoyed it enough to vote for that one. Although, if you know a little bit more about uh, this award thing, I feel like it's often a popularity contest and people have only read like one out of 20 books so they're gonna vote for that one, which whatever, like we kind of all know that at this point. But 
that's why I force myself to continue and continue and continue. And I think I'm about to like 40 something percent into it and I was still not enjoying it. I thought about DNF it, DNFing it at least five times. At least five times. You're following uh, this group of guests to a wedding and it's just very boring. I am not enjoying it. Like why do I, like I kept trying to think, oh, it's gonna get better. Like, let me like try it again. I would put it down. Like I would be like getting ready in the morning. That's when I try to listen to audiobooks. It just makes it more fun. And I would just pause it and listen to nothing because I didn't want to continue, which like, dude, this is your sign. You're not enjoying it. But I would like stubbornly do this every single day. <laughs> so I really, really tried, but I think this one is just not for me. I don't know if it's just like the writing or just the story was kind of boring. and. I think that once you get this far into your book and you're still really not enjoying it, it's okay. You put it down, move on with your life. You pick up a different audiobook at this point. <laughs> like it's just, no, no, I have no regrets with that one. Okay, the last one is the one that I think in the future I will pick it up again. It's just that I had a few issues that made me put it down and uh. so um, A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny. I have been wanting to read the series, the inspector, uh, chief inspector, Armand Gamache. Because the whole thing happens in Quebec, you know, I'm French Canadian, so for me it's like special. Um, and I did enjoy overall the first book. Everything's happening in a small village, tree pines, and I I like the vibes, you know, it was just nice to finally see some representation of my people. <laughs> Although everything happens in English, but still. Um, it was good enough, like the characters were likable. So I picked up the second book, which A Fatal Grace. And I put it down at about like 10% into it. I was reading the ebook for two reasons. First off, it happens in winter, which like super bad argument, uh, but like it's 30 degrees Celsius, although not today, it's like not even 20, but it's been really warm and reading about Christmas was just kind of weird. And that combined with, I noticed how weirdly she's describing some of the characters. Like you could notice a few things in the first book, which was written like 16 years ago, the first book, or is it the second book? So it's been a little while, but not that long. And I feel like some of the descriptions just didn't age well. And I know that like we're becoming more and more uh, careful with these kind of things, but still it's just like, it didn't age well. So with that, there are two main things. Uh, first off, she's describing the fat characters really weirdly, um, especially, what is her name? Is it Norma? I'm terrible with names, um, but there's a black woman and she keeps describing her as, the fat black woman. And it's just like not not working for me the way she's describing her. She seems like a super interesting character, especially in the first book. You learn a little bit about her past, how she used to work like in Montreal, like big money um, psychologist. And then she decided to move to a small village. And she's super interesting. She owns like a used bookstore. So like, obviously we like books, so we're gonna enjoy that character. And to just have that weird label, weird description, happening a lot, especially once again, I've read like the first 10% of the book, was just really weird. And she did it again with a couple of the characters, including there's a gay couple and one of them is also fat. And again, the descriptions were weird. I think whenever I pick up the book again, I will like take note of the quotes just so I can give you the examples, but it just stood out so intensely and weirdly. So like the gay couple and then the black woman just stand out kind of like token of like, oh, look, some diversity in that little town. It Like in the first book, it was already a bit, mm, but like, okay, it's nice diversity. But in the second book, once again, it just quickly became really, really strange. And especially when you compare it with the way she describes the other characters, she's not describing them as like white, thin woman, you know? Anyway, I don't think I'm being overly sensitive about it because I did comment about it on Goodreads and a lot of you were agreeing. So at least I'm not the only one that noticed, but yes, I am planning on continuing. It's just that I wasn't feeling it at the moment. I think I'm gonna wait until it cools down a little bit more. I'm still planning on continuing the series. There's like like 17 books or something and apparently gets much better as you know the author is growing and hopefully uh, these things are kind of resolved in the rest of the series. But yeah, just be warned. I know some people are more sensitive. Uh, yeah, it, it's just... So these are the books that I DNF'd, but looking back, I feel like I could have DNF'd some other ones. Like I'm thinking like Anxious People, for example. I realized quickly that it's just not my kind of book. It, it feels a bit like preachy to me. Like it wants to be wholesome, but for me it just doesn't work. And I know it's a me thing, uh, but 
for I know that I could have DNF'd it and not missed out, but I wanted to see how it ended. I was hoping it was going to get better and it didn't. So I'm taking it as a sign that I need to be even harsher in the future. So I didn't DNF that many books. I feel like I'm doing fairly good at choosing books unless I'm still being stubborn. We'll see, but I have great plans, great TBRs uh, planned at least for the summer. So I might not need to DNF that many books. Wish me luck. Let me know in the comment section what books you have DNF'd uh, this spring ish <laughs> for like summer now but like the last three months because I want to know it's also something that a lot of you were telling me that you're also trying to work on and just put down books moving on picking up something else because what's the point let's stop torturing yourself in 2021 we can do this <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this quick little video thumbs up subscribe I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you uh, in upcoming video very soon bye